Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and then this right into the comp video, we're going to be discussing everything we know about AMD's upcoming Ryzen processor. Since New Horizon has been and gone, it's time for us to look through the dust, the debris, and give our opinions about 24 hours after the fact. It was definitely a time for AMD to be bold, a time for them to show the world that Ryzen wasn't all hype, an internet extravagance with no real performance claims to back it up. No. AMD wanted to quash those fears any person had, and they wanted to send a message to gamers that they were back in business, that they were going to be competitive against Intel. There's a lot of news on the CPU formerly known as Zen, and so this video aims to give folks a crash course in what we've learned, not just over the couple of months, but specifically going into uh, New Horizon itself. We'll be omitting most of the rumours and non-official sources of benchmarks simply due to us not being certain when those benchmarks or information were relevant in Zen's production. It's not that I doubt their validity, it's just that let's say a benchmark is three months old, how much stock do you want to put in it, especially when we don't know, for example, the clock speed? So instead, let's focus on what we do know officially. So let's talk about the technology behind Ryzen. This is an overview of not just the revelations of New Horizon, but also previous details that the company have released. Now, a few months ago, we did release a Zen analysis, actually a couple of parts of it, so I guess we need to do part three now that New Horizon has been and gone. But it does serve to delve deeper into the previously released details and what I could hope to do in this video. I'll certainly give you the highlights in this video, but if you want a more in-depth analysis, then you can go ahead and link, check the links in the video description. Ryzen was created from the ground up, with AMD's goal to beat the IPC of their previous processors by 40% or greater. Lisa Su did tell us that the performance of Ryzen has exceeded this, but she will not tie herself down to a number. Now, I'm going to assume this is because the engineers are still tweaking the design, and so any number they give us now is probably going to be outdated in just a couple of months. At its most basic level, Zen clocks up to 3.4 GHz+, plus, with boost frequencies to be announced at the launch of the processor in Q1 next year. The CPU is built in a very basic way in modules, and these are known as CPU complexes, also known as CCX. These share an interconnected 8 megabytes of the level 3 cache across each four cores, and each core also sports its own 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache as well. AMD have drastically tweaked the bandwidth of the caches across the entire system, level 3 being 5 times faster, and level 1 and level 2 being about twice the speed of their previous architectures. Perhaps most importantly, Ryzen is a lot better at handling floating point, a weakness in AMD's most recent foray of CPUs. Not only does it, the integer units, uh, sorry, and the integer units, support a much wider registry and more, more robust retirement queue, but the floating point can also send data easily to the integer units and vice versa. The entire execution block is certainly more robust and efficient, though we'll need to do some benchmarks across a much wider range of applications to see if AMD's 40% IPC can hold up in more than just Blender and Handbrake. Each core is capable of two threads, thanks to SMT, simultaneous multi-threading, and each core has had its fetch, decode, and execution block significantly tweaked. It's outside the remit of this video to go through all of the changes, so I would encourage you to check out part two of our analysis, once again linked in the video description. But they do allow Ryzen to be much better at fetching instructions ahead of processing, reducing pipeline stalls, and overall just being much more efficient as a processor, and much more Intel-like as well. So, what have we learned in New Horizon? Well, AMD have confirmed that the CPU will hit desktop first, once again during Q1 next year. The top model will sport 8 Zen cores, 16 threads, so this means it's comprised then of 2 CCXs, and it will run at 3.4 GHz+, plus, and a total of 20 MB level 3 and level 2 cache, with level 3 eating up the majority of this at 16 MB, that's once again 8 MB per 4 cores. They're still nailing down the final boost clocks, so you'll have to watch this space for me to give you that information, I'm afraid. 
They were also keen to remind us that the CPU will be utilizing the AM4 platform. Not particularly surprising, and honestly this is the part of Zen which was the least interesting, at least to me. It's not really revolutionary, it's more about keeping up with Intel, PCI Express Generation 3, native USB 3.1, NVMe. And of course, tasty, delicious, and delicate DDR4 memory support. Stop me if you've heard all of this before, it's basically Intel's current feature set, and all AMD here are doing is jumping onto the forefront, which is absolutely fine. I'm not criticizing them for that, it's good that they're now fully up to the modern era, but it's definitely the least interesting part of uh, the Zen slash Ryzen architecture. There will be multiple platform types. These include the X370 and the B350. These will likely be the boards of preference for power users. Not only do they offer a greater number of PCIe slots, but also overclocking support. And that's stuff it will definitely get into in just a moment. Pricing for those boards is also a bit of a mystery, but I suspect they're going to probably vary once again based upon the type of board you're going for, with obviously the 370 being more expensive than the 350 and so on, and also the manufacturer. I ex suspect it's not going to be prohibitively expensive, however. The big feature AMD is touting, however, is an umbrella of technologies actually known as Sense MI. It's a collection of five different features that, that Zen is using to improve the performance of the chip. Pure power was being the first, and as the name implies, monitors both the heat of the processors, the voltage, and the overall power consumption. The slides are very jargon heavy, unfortunately, for the average user, but all you need to know is that hundreds of sensors monitor aspects across the processor and will keep power consumption as low as possible to keep the not only heat low, but also to reduce power consumption so that, let's say, for mobile units as well. This is likely a combination of power gating, which is the act of shutting off parts of the CPU which are not being used, and it does so, of course, very quickly, and other such, such technologies. Precision Boost is the natural ally of pure power, but unlike pure power, which wants to keep the heat down, Precision Boost aims to squeeze the performance out as high as it can, you can probably think of this as either GPU boost or Intel's Turbo Boost, although obviously AMD probably wouldn't want you to think of it as the latter. This provides Ryzen with the ability to clock itself higher, that is, providing it can keep within acceptable limits of heat and power consumption. The CPU will constantly tweak its speed for ever higher clocks, and it does this at up to just 25 megahertz increments and it will do so in just mere milliseconds, which is very impressive. The extension to this is XFR, which is Extended Frequency Range, and it is essentially precision boost, but gone even further, it's on steroids. It's automatic overclocking, and unlike Turbo, which may be set to a specific speed, XFR will exceed this. It scales based upon the cooler you're using, if you have a weedy air cooler, but then next month upgrade to a high-end water cooling loop, well, XFR theoretically shall be happy to oblige. This is an exciting idea and does certainly raise a lot of uh, eyebrows, but I do wonder how aggressive this will be. We have heard that Zen is overclockable manually. Do for don't forget that AM4 um, slides that AMD have released, X370 for example, is listed as overclocking plus. But how this works in combination with XFR, whether they're mutually exclusive, for example, and how aggressive XFR will be is remaining to be seen. For example, let's assume that I have a basic heatsink fan, and then I decide to whip that off and then cool the processor with liquid nitrogen. How much of a difference will I actually get in clock speed? Unfortunately, we're going to need a lot of samples to know this. So, for example, you could just get very unlucky in the silicon lottery, and your Zen might just overclock terribly. On the other hand, you might just be the anomaly, and 90% of Zens might overclock extremely well. I keep saying Zen, it's Ryzen, isn't it? Well, I guess that's what happens when you change the uh, name of a processor. Anywho, um, neural net prediction is the other big thing for the CPU. And to clarify, it is essentially branch prediction, if, when, or else. 
Well, a CPU should be pretty good at figuring out program flow and grabbing the next instruction. It will work in tandem with Smart Prefetch, which will guess what data applications need from the cache and in theory at least reduce memory access times. These two technologies, at least according to Lisa Su, account for about 25% of Ryzen gains. Now, it does learn the application as you're going. Unfortunately, exactly how it does this, the scale of how it does this, how long it takes to do this, and uh, quite a few other questions are just not answered at the moment. And yes, the slides do give some hints, but unfortunately, I think we're going to have to wait before we do in-depth analysis on this, because... There is certainly a lot of neural net prediction out there. Uh, you can start doing Googling and start popping up with stuff. But how AMD's, or rather how similar AMD's is to this, and what differences there are in terms of how it predicts instructions as a, as a processor and how it scales across different applications. For example, do some applications lend themselves much better for it? For example, does a game work better than, let's say, Blender? Does Blender work better than, say, Adobe Premiere? We don't know. So we'll just have to wait and see. So what about performance, which ultimately is probably the reason you're going to buy the processor? Well, so far, promising. AMD have earlier sh this year showed the 3 gigahertz engineering sample Zen, and it was capable of edging out a Broadwell E processor the 6900K, if both were clocked at 3 gigahertz. Now, obviously, those were conservative clocks because it was an ES sample, an engineering sample. New Horizon, AMD, have bought us Ryzen, which is running at 3.4 gigahertz, and with no boost, can take on stock i7 at 6900K Broadwell, which features up to 3.7 gigahertz turbo boost. Generally, if all threads of the 6900K are being stressed, it probably is running at about 3.5 GHz. Ryzen did slightly beat Intel at both Handbrake and Blender, with Handbrake being about 5 seconds faster, or about 10 sec uh, about 10%, which is not terrible. There are still a lot of questions concerning Zen, however, and not least of all is the pricing. As I said just yesterday, I wanted AMD to go on record and say it'll be less than half the price than Broadwell E. Or some other hint. Some wink, some smile to give us a, a, a clue when Lisa Su said that, yeah, our processor beats the $1,100 Intel CPU. Yeah, but if you don't give us a point, point, uh, point of comparison, excuse me, that doesn't really tell us that much. Instead, all we got was a fairly deafening silence. I'm going to assume that they're still figuring out the yields of the chip and figuring what they can actually charge us, what's a fair price, which I also suspect is going to really impact um, the market as a whole, yields, and also what Intel finally charged for KB Lake, although I think we have a pretty good idea of the latter. AMD have it pretty good, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your perspective. If Ryzen is as good as these benchmarks lead us to believe, it's going to be very hard for me and many other tech uh, gurus, for lack of a better word, to recommend KB Lake to users. Because unless KB Lake clocks really well and Ryzen doesn't clock that well at all, it would mean that basically Ryzen is just the better value CPU. Overclocking support, then, really is the big question for Ryzen. Intel do clock very well, we know that. So yes, it does have a lot fewer cores. Assuming, once again, that the price range of Ryzen for the 8-core 16-thread model is three to 400 US dollars, and obviously it may not be. At the end, in the end, the only thing we can do is wait and see. Really, the ball is in AMD's court. They've got a lot of attention right now, not just with not just with Ryzen, but with Vega. So what they have to do, of course, is to keep our interest. The rumours peg that the 8-core 16-thread model is going to launch earlier than the other ones, meaning, at least in theory, if the chips are going to be quite expensive, prohibitively so, a great number of people won't be able to buy them, and... This does leave a awful lot of folks which Intel could sweep up with good deals on the i5s, for example. 
I'm sure that they do have the margin in their budget to cut the pricing. That's assuming that Intel wants to. After all, they can certainly take the losses for the short term, and I guess it depends how they can counter. In the end, they would have to wait until the end of uh, 2017 to counter with Coffee Lake for six cores or more. And, well, let's not even get into the complexities of Vega in this video. But as always, stick with us at redgamingtech.com. So be sure to like um, the video if you, well, have liked it. Uh, subscribe if you want more like this, because we'll certainly be keeping you apprised of any developments in Zen, Vega, as well as pretty much anything else in the industry. You will be amongst the first to know, I promise you. Upcoming videos include a Vega um, update, very similar to this one, perhaps a little different in format. And also a Scorpio um, video as well, which will be kind of similar to this, but perhaps very different in format, which made very little sense now I said it aloud. And, well, a whole bunch of reviews. So... With all of that said, thank you very much for watching this video, and normal things, like, share, subscribe, comment, send internet cookies, it will be greatly appreciated. Take care of yourselves, bye for now.